This is going to be a very quick and punchy tutorial to demonstrate the ease of backtesting your trading strategy within Forex Tester 2. So like any program, it's very straightforward to install. This is what you'll see when you first open the program. What you want to do straight away is import the historical data on the markets we're planning on backtesting. The good thing is Forex Tester actually provides you this data completely for free via Forex site. Anyway, so uh, what you want to be doing is heading up towards the top left hand corner here where you'll either see history mode or testing mode. Just make sure you're in history mode from this step. Next go to file and then data center. From here you want to be selecting the pair you're wanting to import the data for by ticking the corresponding box. So in this example we'll just look at the euro dollar. You can change any of the property settings here as well. So whether that's the spread, the lot size, the decimal places you want to see, the swap long shorts, the margin, whatever it is. As you'll see every time you close this box and change the settings um, you will need to regenerate the ticks. I'll show you this step in just a second. For the time being, just go ahead and close that. So from here, all you want to be doing is just update from server. As you can see, you can select two options. You can select download new history, which is uh, basically downloading part of the history from the end of the last update. If it's the first time uh, that you're opening Forex Tester, I'd probably select download part history. What that means is that you can input a predefined date range of your choice. So in this example here, we can put in uh, the 1st of January 2001 to the end of the last month. Just go ahead and hit update. What it will then do is um, it will download all the one minute bars and it will unzip them and it will load it onto the charts. It takes about 30 seconds or so, so I'm just going to pause this and come back once that's done. As you can see, we've got a little notification window here just telling us that we need to generate the ticks from here. So just go ahead and close that window and click generate ticks. Select the corresponding box that we've just downloaded the data for and then select generate by open, high, low, close points. You will only tick this box down here if you've got real tick data which you've purchased from Forex Tester uh, at an additional charge. So just go ahead, same thing as before, just generate the ticks. Same sort of process, I'll come back as soon as that's done. It's only going to take about 30 seconds or so. And that's it. Uh, once you've done that, that's it. You've, you've completely finished it. You've now successfully imported all your data ready for backtesting. So it's very, very straightforward and it's very, very easy stuff indeed. One nice little bonus as well is that this data can actually be exported too. So for example, if you wanted this quality one minute data for backtesting in uh, MetaTrader 4, you can do this uh, on the data center screen by hitting export, which I'll show you uh, by going file, data center. As you can see, just go ahead and hit export. Now let's have a little look at uh, how we can initiate our backtesting. Alrighty, to start backtesting, what we need to do is head up towards the top left hand corner again, select the drop down menu, select testing mode, and as you can see the program will now switch modes. Forget about this notification window because we've just done that. And uh, from here you may not see any charts already, so what you need to do is select the chart from the tiny little icon just up here on the left. You'll either see a blank chart or one where all the bars have been populated. Don't worry if you cannot see any bars on the chart. It's simply because you have not initiated the backtesting yet. Obviously I have. To start backtesting, what you need to do is just hit start test. You basically have two choices. You can start from the first uh, bar in the date range or you can define the first date to start from. You can preload a set number of days as well. So for example, if I wanted to preload uh, an entire year from 2001, I can go ahead and just do that based upon this slider here. Make sure the pause mode has actually been selected as well because you don't want price to run away from you. That all makes sense in just a second. So once you've decided how you want it, just go ahead and start testing. And as you can see, it preloads a set number of days there and that's it, you're done. You can change the chart color scheme as well or any other settings that you like just by right clicking anywhere on the chart and going to chart settings. So very similar to MetaTrader if any of you have used that. Now you have two choices from here. You can hit space bar on your keyboard, keyboard sorry, which will populate the next bar on the corresponding time frame. So at the moment we're looking at a daily time frame as you can see up here. So if I hit space bar it will populate each individual bar moving forward. Alternatively, you can unpause here. The speed in which price moves relative to historical real time can be controlled with this slider here. You can speed it up based upon the time intervals here. So to give you an example, if we move it down to the 5 minute time interval, and I sped it right up, 
you look carefully you can see this uh, bar actually developing based upon that speed that we've selected. If I want to go slightly faster and then a little bit more and go ahead and do that. Right, last step, let's actually have a look at placing a couple of trades. You can place a few pending orders, you can place market orders, whatever you like. The blank sheet just up here uh, is for placing market orders and the one on the right with the P is for placing pending orders. So let's have a look, look at the pending orders. Uh, you can select the specific lot value, entry stop and target prices, whatever you like. You can also select trailing stops just under this menu here as well. Uh, you can use these little, little icons just here and what it will do is actually pull price from the market far quicker for you as well rather than having to input it. So for example, I can click this little button and it will drag and drop where I want the entry price to be. So let's say it's just beneath the low here. Again for the stop loss, I'm going to place that just above the high. If you notice actually one thing, uh, look on the right hand side, it will tell you how many pips that is away from the stop. So in this example it's 196.9 pips. And the take profit again on the right hand side, we can see that going to try and bag 189.5 pips let's just say so I can go ahead and place that and it will move that pending order just beneath uh, this tab here where it says pending order so that's going to sit there again we can move the bars forward now with the space or we can unpause uh, just up here as well so in this example I'm just going to be hitting space and I'm going to populate each corresponding bar moving forward on this time frame so now you can see that we're actually entered into the position. So it's moved out from pending orders tab to the open positions tab where we can see what our floating equity is as well and how many pips we're up and all the other relevant bits of information. On the profit uh, chart here, you can see very faintly just along the right hand side there, that's the floating equity of what actually happened on the next day. And you can see the slight drawdown as well, basically how far the position went against us. Going back to the trade, let's just see how this plays out. And as you can see, as soon as we've hit the take profit target, just along the left hand side here, all the, um, the statistics are basically being populated, added up as a, and summarizing what's actually happening with our strategy that we're trying to backtest here. And going back to the profit chart, you can see where our balance is closed, how far the drawdown actually reached. Um, and then obviously all the data is actually stored in terms of the trade you took under the account history tab as well.